Okay. Yeah, all right, I guess I'll have to look it up myself. Uh, mount, maybe? I think I can maybe find it that way. There it is. The old Paladin and Warlock epic mount quest chains. I was so mad whenever Zach got his mount for free. I was actually fucking furious. Uh, show it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the new WoW cinematic called Safe Haven. We watched the WoW cinematic called Safe Haven at the very beginning of the stream. Uh, if people want to see it again, because obviously people, you know, there's like more people now and like, you know, not everybody got a chance. Maybe we can watch it again. But, uh, you know, uh, the beta is not up. By the way, guys, beta is not up. I just checked. Uh, just go ahead and relax. All right. Rewatch it. Haven't seen it. Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season uh, here, and I'm finally back with another episode of Time Warp. This is a series where I go over features or things that used to be in the game, but were removed or changed for one reason or another. For this one, I wanted to cover the old Paladin and Warlock mount quest chains that were removed in the Cataclysm. Wait, somebody, oh, That's wait, right. okay, we gotta yeah, pause this. Somebody wanted me to look at the new news about on Wowhead, okay? Give me one second, let's, let's take a look at what the news is. Uh, new Pepe costume in Rise of Ashara. Wow. That's incredible. Holy shit. This is really, I mean, we've been waiting for this for a long time. Thank you, Blizzard. Uh, I really appreciate your dedication. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, this is like just other achievements and rewards. I, I don't really want to look at this right now. Uh, just a second, let me go back to it. Another thing that was removed with that expansion. It definitely gave me a lot of material for this series, that's for sure. Now, there are of course two different mounts for both of these classes. Originally, it was the level 40 versions and the level 60 beefed up versions. For the level 40 ones, you just did a quick turning quest to learn how to summon the mount. Yeah, fuck for warlocks, you, warlocks, it was the Felsteed, which you learned from an NPC in Ratchet. I, and for Paladins, it was the Warhorse, which you got from an NPC in Stormwind. It's so dumb, dude. And they from got these that for quests, free. you also got the Apprentice Riding Skill Trained, which allows yep. you to ride 60% speed ground mounts. So, because they were quest rewards, they were free, which was a big deal back then. In the early days, not counting reputation or honor discounts, the level 40 training used to cost 10 gold and the mount 100 gold. And for level 60, it was 100 gold for the training and 1000 for the mount. Like this was later changed to where the prices were reversed. The training was switched to 100 and 1000 and the mount to 10 yeah, and 100. They're making the training cheap Most and people the mount didn't have 100 classic. gold at level 40 or 1100 at 60 and they would have to save up for quite a while. It wasn't uncommon for people to be mountless until the 50s or seeing level 60s riding the 60% speed mounts for several months. So, just being these two classes gave you a pretty big advantage, and it was actually a pretty controversial thing at the time. Yeah, that You'd was You'd have stupid. forum posts saying that it's unfair, and nope. that it's preferential treatment, yep. that it's an unacceptable slap in the face, Absolutely. and so on. I never understood that, and that totally had nothing to do with the fact that my first 60 was a paladin. Nothing at all. Okay, But, dude. while it was true for the okay. level 40 versions, it actually wasn't entirely true for the level 60 versions. Yeah. And that's because, as you'll see... The quest lines for the level 60 versions were quite extensive, and they also required expensive items or just straight up gold costs that was to badass complete. Back in the day. Far from free, which is what most people thought. Anyways, let's get into it, starting with the Paladin one, since this is the one I actually did in vanilla. This one gave the awesome Charger mount. It was the same for both races, both humans and dwarves got the same mount. And later, when the Blood Elves were released, they got a red version, which I'll talk about later. It all stupid. started from the Paladin class trainer stupid. in Stormwind, Lord Grayson Shadowbreaker. The first quest requires you to travel to Ironforge and talk to an NPC called High Priest Rohan. A donation and give of 150, 150 of gold. gold in exchange for an item called the Exorcism Sensor. See, that's a little bit of realism, right? Whenever you're inter you're interacting with the the, re the church and religions and priests, uh, you have to give them money, and so that that's a little bit of realism there in the game. I like that. Once again, a substantial amount of money back then, and if you completed this part, you were invested in the chain and pretty much had to complete it unless you wanted to essentially waste 150 gold. The next quest sent you to the Terradale area of the Eastern Plaguelands, a high-end level 60 zone, and it required you to exercise 25 spirits there. It was quite lengthy, but I don't but remember so this hardly at all, actually. 
Now that you've proven yourself worthy, your next task was to secure some armor for your mount. You were sent to the blacksmith, Grimand Elmore. Now, if you thought 150 gold was rough, you haven't seen anything yet. This guy wanted not just 150 worse. gold, but 6 Arcanite bars, 10 herbs called Arthas's Tears, 40 Runecloth, and 5 Stratholm Holy Waters. This was when most paladins realized that then. the rumors like, this of was the free level 60 mount weren't really true. So, that's 300 rock gold total so far, and the Arcanite bars in particular were very pricey because farm they were locked you, behind a daily so alchemy good. transmute. And they were used in many high-end crafted gears, so they were in high demand and therefore expensive. Okay. The herbs and room cloth weren't too bad, and the holy water you got from little crates in the Stratholm dungeon. So, this was the first part that required a full party to complete, and everyone competed for these crates, so you had to let your party know that you needed five holy waters for the quest, or you might come out empty. So, now that you have the armor, you just need the horse. Shadowbreaker tells you part. of an ancient equine spirit located in the Dyramal instance, oh, dude, another we did level this. 60 dungeon. We fucking and did this. he also On says stream. that you need special feed for it. For the feed, you have to talk to a special yep. NPC in the South Shore Zone way up north. Yeah, yeah, we did this. She made the feed for you if you gave her 50 gold and 20 enriched mana biscuits. That's a lot of fucking you money. You got these from an Argent Don Quartermaster for about 2 gold and some change. So, that's 350-ish rock gold so far on top of those trade materials. As for the horse spirit, as I said, you needed to head into the Dire Mall instance, oh, yeah. so once and again, another spiritual... five-man escapade. Yeah, those now, this did horses. require a key to get in. But I need a break from talking about those, so I'll just let you use your imagination oh, there. Boy. You needed to kill the Tendris Workwood man. boss in Dyrmal West. It. He was the first boss, so it wasn't too bad. But Dyrmal was a giant maze if I remember correctly, so it actually was kind of bad. But after killing good. the boss, you'd notice a horse spirit there would spawn. Since the quest is now removed, this just mystifies everyone these days. Nobody but knows if what you were on the quest, you would have to catch the horse and feed it that special mana feed you got earlier. It allows you to place the barding upon its back, and it's blessed by the spirit, but you're not done yet. The sensor you were using earlier must be converted into a scryer to be used in a cleansing ritual later. And to convert it into diamonds? a scryer, you gotta pay up. It required an Azerothian diamond and a pristine black diamond. I was diamond. about to say, dude. You got the Azerothian diamond from Thorium Veins. Fairly yep. expensive, but not too bad. Yeah, I was about, but that, the that pristine black diamond was another story. This was a very rare drop from elite dungeon enemies, the Blackrock Depths, I think you Spire, those for, Strathholm, like, the etc. Rep. It was very expensive as I recall, hundreds of gold. So at this I point, you were pretty much nearing the cost of 1000 gold that everyone had to pay anyways, unless you farmed all of this yourself, which was possible, but very tough. It's a time but investment. now that you have the Scryer, there's just one more step. You needed to head into the basement of the Skolomance dungeon, where Rattlegore was located, and use the Scryer. When you did so, it summoned waves and waves of undead enemies, and then finally a special death knight boss named Dark Reaver. See, like, here's what's so badass about this, is that these things right here, you needed other people to help you. Can you imagine playing a game where people weren't that selfish, and they would actually go into a dungeon specifically to help their friend get a mount? Like, that, that's fucking awesome. He used to be a paladin, but was seduced by the call of the Lich King into becoming a Death Knight. He imprisoned a once noble charger and is currently using it as his undead steed much like Baron Rivendare. You had to defeat Dark Reaver and loot the charger's lost soul and then use it to finally free its spirit. And that was it. With that, you finally obtained the charger mount in all of its glory. I remember when I finally got it, I did a few laps is, around dude. Ironforge in celebration. There it is, It was dude. an epic experience, much like the Warlock Strix. I wish sheet, I had done so that back in the day. Into that. I never got a chance to. Now, I didn't do this one personally, so forgive me we if did I this get one some on of the minor details wrong. Yeah, we did this I one did on help stream, some friends get it, but I didn't have a Warlock back out. then, so just give me a little leeway here, and feel free to post any corrections if you have any. So, the quest for this one started from class trainers and brought you to an NPC named Morzul Bloodbringer what in the Burning Steps. Shoulders? He was located at the Altar of Storms, a very interesting place that holds statues that you may have seen before. Oh yeah! And you had to do, well, warlocky stuff to get it. Yeah! Blood, demons, summoning reagents, things of that nature. The first quest required you to get 30 Raging Beasts' blood. For this, Holy you needed shit. to go all the way to Winter Spring. I did work on this a little beasts. bit on my warlock. Remember, this is I never vanilla, finished and it. the traveling for some of these quests was legendary. See, that's how it was. You start here, you go over to there. Why? Because you need a mount. And what else are you going to do? You're going to farm out a thousand gold? Fuck no. You're going all the way over there. 
these are the kinds of quests that these should be max level quests. They should take you across the world. I fucking love it. After completing that, you needed a special reagent called Zerathian Stardust to open a portal to another realm to summon the mount. The only problem is that this is only held by a certain dreadlord located in Felwood. So, Bloodbringer sends you to a servant, Gorziki Wild Eyes. For the next quest, you had to buy something called a shadowy potion from him. This, at all. this made you friendly with the demons of Jadenar located in Felwood, and they cost six gold each, so you wanted to avoid messing up. You needed Damn. to use this potion and then travel all the way through the gauntlet of demons oh, to a dreadlord this named guy. Lord Banehallow. He tells you to go kill an orc warlock named Ulithic, and as a reward, he allows you to buy the stardust from a servant. It was 150 gold, and he had to make sure that you had that on hand before you started all of this, or else Holy you'd have to pay shit. for extra shadowy potions. After you turn in the dust, a series this of material awesome. quests become available. In total, you needed two elixirs of shadow power, six large brilliant shards, wow. 25 dark iron ore, three black dragon scales, Wait. and one arcanite bar. These are used to make some summoning doodads like is, candles, dude. bells, and other paraphernalia. Hey, no one ever said being a warlock was cheap. Yeah, Upon completing that, you had a couple more quests Warlocks to complete. Warlocks are very cheap. You need to write a parchment that's infused with the stardust you got earlier, but the only place you can do that is the Skullomance dungeon. Wild Eyes gives you an item called- See, like, this is, this is MMO shit, right? I mean, you go around to completely different places in the world and you just, like, do quests. And there's actually, like, a good reward. I think they still have- I mean, they still have stuff like this in the game now, to an extent. But the rewards are just so meaningless that everybody just considers it an inconvenience. It's like, okay, well, I guess I have to go over there and turn this thing in. And I think also, like, with flying, for example, because you can just fly everywhere, most of these run from one point so far away to another point so far away. It's just go up, and you fly, and then you go down. And uh, I, I just feel like it's kind of boring now the imp in a jar who can create the parchment so you have to bring it to the alchemy lab within the dungeon so it can make it after completing that you need to buy a few more reagents an item called jv's jar for 150 and a black lodestone and zerathian glyphs for 50 each of course. not counting the trade materials of that's over 400 raw gold invested into this chain so far absolutely but there was a trick if you knew a warlock who already had those materials you could just have him do the summoning for you so you could save yourself some gold Anyways, now that you have all you need to summon your steed, you just need to head to the right location now, which was the west wing of Dyramal. And once again, you did need a key to get to where you needed to go. There's a boss in there named Imulthar. You have to- So y'all remember this shit, right? Like, we did this on my stream, and we summoned this mob here, so I could get this specific unique transmog gear. This boss drops special transmog gear that's obtainable now, if you have somebody that did the quest and still has the items. It's obtainable now. And we did this on stream. It was fucking badass. Kill him, and you'll notice a bunch of dyes in the room that were being used to imprison him. This is what we're going to use to summon the Dreadsteed. Once he's dead, you use the jar, and the imp sets up all of the doodads. Yep. Waves of demons start coming at you, pretty similar to the paladin finale. The bell, wheel, and candles the imp puts on the ground really will be maintenance cool. throughout the encounter, and requires recharging by the warlock. You needed to use that black lodestone you bought earlier on them, and doing so took a soul shard, so you also had to stock up on those before starting. You do this until nine demonic symbols appear around the boss room. That was so annoying, At this man. point, you use that the Zarathian so... glyphs you got earlier to summon the Dreadsteed, there which you is. have to then fight. There he Once is. it reaches 50% health, a Dreadlord named Lord Helnarath appears to try and stop you. you... Fun fact, they brought back Lord Helnarath, and he's actually a... Uh, this is actually something really cool that Blizzard did. They brought back Lord Helnarath in uh, the Broken Shore in Legion, and if you had the Warlock Class Order Hall mount and you killed Lord Helnarath, he would give you another mount. Like, Blizzard, it's not like Blizzard never does anything good. Like, every once in a while, they do actually do something pretty fucking cool, and that was one of the examples of it. That was awesome. Summoning demons, very respectable kids? Absolutely. You may recognize this name as a rare elite enemy on the Broken Shore in the Legion expansion, a cool little callback to this questline. From here, you have to finish off the Steed and Hilnarath, and if you're successful, you're done. The Spirit of the Dread Steed would then spawn, and if you talked to it, you completed the quest and got the mount. And like I mentioned at this point, you can even summon Imagine in other wiping. warlocks to talk to the Spirit as well so they could get it too, which saved them some gold. So that's it for the original Paladin and Warlock mount questlines. 
Really interesting stuff and quite epic back in the day. Was if you had really these mounts, cool. you would turn heads since, like I mentioned, 100% speed mounts were quite rare for a while there in vanilla. They it was weren't hard free to get like most people thought, then. but they were definitely cheaper. But the quest lines were tough, which is a fair trade off, I think. I actually really like As that. I, I wish every though, class had the a Blood quest line like also that. had their own special version called the Thalassian Charger. They were the only race on the Horde side who could be Paladins, so Blizzard got, wanted to mirror the Alliance that. quest chain. The Night Lord Blood Valor of Silvermood City started this one, and it started off with some material quests right away. Okay. He wants you to join a special order called the Blood Knights, yeah, and I to do that, you all. need to pay tribute. You needed to bring 40 Rune Holy Cloth, shit. 10 Sun Grass, 6 Arcanite Bars, 5 Dark Runes, and 150 Gold. Pretty pricey, but at this time, the Burning Crusade was out, so gold was, was a little easier well, to come by. Nobody the next wanted part it anymore. was a solo quest that required you to kill some Scourge in the Eastern Plaguelands. Nothing too difficult there. But the part after that was a group quest because it required you to go into the Elite area, Tear's Hand. You had to get some holy oh. water from one of the buildings there. Oh. It was soloable if yeah, you were careful with this. aggro, but a group definitely helped. Holy and shit. the follow-up required even more materials. This time, an Azerothian diamond and pristine black diamond just like the Alliance side, but Damn. also a couple of items bought from a vendor. An okay. arcane catalyst for 50 gold, and a crepuscular powder for 150. Bloodwrath prepared this into a mixture for you to use in the Alonzo's chapel near the entrance to the undead side of Stratholm. You use this mixture to douse the eternal flame located inside of the chapel. What the, the Blood fuck? Knights and Paladins are sort of at war with each other, so you did this to sort of prove wow. your superiority to That's them. That's actually really cool. They the added Paladin that in inside, for BC. The Aureus, will attack you once you douse the flame, so you had to defeat him. Holy shit. And once you did, five elite Paladins spawned outside and attacked you. If you were able to successfully kill them, That's you crazy. were awarded with not only the Charger, but also a special Blood Knight Tabard. Definitely oh, an interesting yeah. mirror to the Alliance side. Look and at this, that's dude! that's about it. Those are the old mount quests, in a nutshell. They're an interesting piece of the game's history, and they were a big deal back then. Remember, a big deal this was now, back when even. most quests consisted like of kill X enemies or look back pick up on items, think it's awesome. so having these long chains with gauntlet finales was pretty daunting. But that's it for this episode. I hope you found the video interesting Fuck or yeah, entertaining. Dude. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Time Warp. Thanks for watching. Peace. Ah, oh, dude. Jeez. It's always really cool to go back and see all this old shit. I wish that Blizzard did more things like this. And obviously, like, you could say that the Class Order Hall quest lines were like this, but here's the big difference between the Class Order Hall quest lines and stuff like this, is that it wasn't spoon-fed to you in the same way that the quests are now, and so there was more of a sense of actually accomplishing something rather than just kind of going from point A to point B. And two, the other thing is probably like, I, I would say, let me think, what would be the other thing? Oh, because it, it wasn't a guarantee. Like there wasn't a guarantee that obviously everything would go well. And I feel like that was the main thing. Cause like with the class order hall mounts, you knew that you were going to get it. It was just a matter of time. And I think that really kind of made things boring. Just a second. It's not just that. I think it mattered more whenever you got a fast mount. Well, yeah, there was that too, right? And like the, the class order hall mounts were just basically another skin and it wasn't a big deal.